morning and welcome to our worship service. If you have downloaded it or you have it on your screen, would you look at your worship guide and join with me in our call to worship? If you don't have it, I hope you will listen carefully to this call to be the church. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Though we find ourselves isolated in homes, apartments, and residential places, yet, yet we, we would listen, listen to the birds singing, reminding, reminding us that the whole creation rejoices in the love of our God. God. Though we cannot reach out and touch our friends and neighbors, we, we would rejoice, rejoice that Jesus is in our midst, holding out hands of grace and hope to us. To us. Though we have to stand at a safe distance from others, whispering hello through masks, we know that the Spirit is of all around us, breathing peace on us in these moments, surrounding us with grace and hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus our Christ. Gracia y paz para ti. In el nombre de Jesucristo. Good morning. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We are so glad that you are online with us, either on Facebook or at our website, thenewchurch.com. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for being present, not just to us, but to our God. Thank you for worshiping, even in the midst of all we are facing, to celebrate the presence of God in our midst. We are the new church, the Chiesa Nuova United Church of Christ. We take our name from the baptismal site of St. Francis of Assisi, who we believe was among Jesus' most faithful followers. And, and so there is a church built over his baptismal site called the Chiesa Nuova. And when we translate that, it means the new church. And you know, we believe that God continues to do a new thing in us, and through us, and in the midst of us, and beyond us. And that is why we take the name The New Church. We are also part of the United Church of Christ, a denomination that proudly proclaims whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And by here, we mean together, over the internet. We all are welcome here as we worship this morning. I just want to remind you that even though we are keeping physical distance in order to be safe, to protect ourselves, and to protect others, especially those most critically at risk from this disease, it does not mean we have to be alone or isolated. We will be the church here in this space over the miracle of the internet. And so we thank you for worshiping with us today. As we worship today, I invite you to fully participate in our worship service. Pray with us. Sing with us. Uh, register your presence with us. Let us know of the prayers we can pray with you. Make your gifts of offering. And be sure and participate in the Feast of Holy Communion with us. In fact, right now, or at a later time in the service, I invite you to get a piece of bread or a cracker, a piece of some juice, so that you can share in this ancient feast with us that we will celebrate later in our worship service. I also want to invite you to take a moment and go to our website, www.thenewchurch.com, and click on the live stream link. There you will find a place to register your presence on, in worship today. You will find a place to let us know of prayers that we can be praying with you. And you can make a gift to the church. And I just want to say right now two things. One is we have a hard time knowing who's worshiping with us. And we want to know. We want to know your name. We want to know that you are worshiping with us. It gives us a chance to kind of know how we're doing. And so if you would do that, it would help us a lot. Also, your gifts to the church matter a lot for us right now. Uh, because we are not taking a, a weekly offering during, by passing plates in a physical sense, uh, we rely on you making gifts online, either through a bank draft, a credit card, Venmo, or Zelle, and hope you will take some time. Or you can make a gift directly through our website. So we hope that you will do that. 
And as we worship today, I want to invite you to comment. If you're on Facebook, make some comments. Let us know you're worshiping. Let us know what you think. Say an amen or an hallelujah. And, let, and share with each other as we worship together. Send a picture of your worship space or a view. And if you're worshiping through our website, you can do the same. Email us at info at the new And let us know how you're doing. Say an amen. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a shout out. And all of you, please share our link on Facebook. Share it with your uh friends and others and and online if you can invite people to worship with us it will help us to get the good news of the easter resurrection of jesus christ out into the world and in doing so we will feel more connected so thank you for worshiping with us today our youth will be meeting with pastor yadi martinez our youth minister and our youth volunteer, Joseph Osorio. And we're grateful for that, that as we worship, our youth are having their time together as well. And now, with the confidence of God, let us sing our songs of praise together. This is the end. 
day that we will gather together in isolation. But we remember Jesus was isolated. He was separated. And he bore the world's sorrows and sins. And then Jesus rose. He rose so that we could find hope. He rose so that we could find healing. He rose so that we could have eternal life. Jesus rose. And so will we. To a world consumed with disappointment, despair, and fear. We take this message of hope, healing, and life. We are the messengers of the good news that Jesus Christ has risen. newchurch.com under the tab live stream and that will help you worship with us. I'm uh, so glad to welcome our children to our service today. Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I want to remind your parents or the adults who are caring for you today that you can go to the newchurch.com and hit the live stream tab and there is a special worship bulletin a worship guide there just for you that they can print off and you can uh, worship with us and use your worship guide uh, as we worship together. Well, uh, this morning I want to talk about Jesus. And last week we celebrated Jesus' resurrection and we talked about how he had a body and then that body was transformed into a resurrected body. And today we hear a story about Jesus as a resurrected Christ stepping into a room where all the disciples were. And, and you know what the first thing he said to them was? The very first thing Jesus said to them was, peace be with you. Now this is pretty amazing because the last time they encountered Jesus, they were betraying Jesus and running for their lives and not being supportive with Jesus when he needed their help the most. So it's remarkable, isn't it, that Jesus comes into their midst and says, peace be with you. And I forgive you. Jesus tells them and invites them to forgive others as well. And that's a lesson that we learned today, is that even when people are not so nice to us, we can still offer peace to them and forgive them. And that's something I want you to talk with your parents or the adults that you will have lunch with today. Ask them about that. How do we forgive people? And, and how do we give peace to them? And that doesn't mean we have to be around them all the time, especially if they're, they're hurting us. But it does mean that we can forgive them and we can care and offer peace to them and then go about our lives in a healthy way. So what I want to tell you is right now, we're not in a space where we can say, we can hug people and kiss them and tell them, peace be with you and I love you like we used to do when we were all together in church. But there's lots of ways we can say peace be with you. In some traditions, people put their hands together and bow to each other as a way of saying, I honor God in you. And then they bow back and honor God in us. Another way is we can say it in a different language. We can say, um, la paz de Dios, the peace of God, or we can um, also do what I used to do in the 1960s and say, peace, brother, peace, sister, or here's an even better one. Today, I'm going to teach you how to say peace be with you in sign language. And this is how we do it. You put your hands together like this, and then you tilt your hands so your left hand's on top as you turn them. 
and say peace. So that's the sign for peace. Peace. And then you put your hands together with your thumbs. B. And then with you. So we say peace be with you. And you know what? You know how to say and also with you? And also with you. <laughs> how about that? That's a great message for today. And that's how we can share the peace with each other in this day and time. Listen, I, I hope I'll see you here next week. But before we uh, end our time together, let's say a prayer together. I'll say a line and you repeat after me, okay? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us peace. Thank you for giving us peace. Help us to offer peace and forgiveness to others. Help us to offer peace and forgiveness to others. Amen. 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 I hope to see you here next week. Have a good week, okay? Bye-bye. And now I'd like to invite us to continue our worship with our uh, time of confession. Oh, excuse me. Are we, did we get that first lesson back? Can you do it? No. Oh, oh, we didn't. Okay. Sorry. I was so thinking ahead. Um, so would you join me in our confession as it is in your um, worship guide? I just want to, I, I have a few things I want to say about that before we start. I want to invite everybody to. Uh, kind of just drop your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes, but if you feel comfortable, drop your eyes, drop your gaze, and let's take a deep breath together, shall we? And as we breathe, let's center our thoughts on God by whatever name we call God. And breathe again, in and out. Breathe again, in and out. Now, those disciples of long ago were filled with great uncertainty, wondering what the next piece of news would bring, what awaited them today, tonight, and the next day. And let's say that that's the same for us today, that we are filled with uncertainty, wondering what next, the next piece of news will bring, what awaits us today, tonight, tomorrow. So let us confess before God and each other how hard it is to believe in the resurrection life, the resurrection hope offered to us by the one who offers us peace and healing. Let us pray together. Holy One, hear the echoes of our locked hearts, we pray. We isolate ourselves from the struggles of the world and wonder if we will ever find our way back. We see the ones who are risking their lives to care for those they don't even know and worry that we could do more. Have mercy on us, O oh God, whose breath gives us life. Walk through the closed doors of our worries and doubts to stand in our midst, offering us that grace which can heal us, that hope which can enliven us, and that faith which enables us to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. As we continue in silence, having confessed our sins together, now let us offer to God the ways we have sinned against God and God's creation, how we have sinned against others, family, friends, and enemies, and our own best selves. Let us keep the silence.
Thanks be to God for this precious gift by which we are able to believe and rejoice in our inheritance. Amen. disciples had met were locked for fear of the temple and government authorities. Jesus Christ came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After that, Jesus showed them the marks of the crucifixion, hands and side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as my Abba, who is God in heaven, has sent me. So I send you. Having said this, Jesus breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the others, other disciples said, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, I will never believe unless I see the marks for myself and put my finger in the nail marks and my hand in the wound of the spear. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus Christ came and stood among them again and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus Christ did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the one of God, and that through believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. Betrayed Jesus and denied him. 
And now we see the disciples locked behind closed doors. It's high drama. And the disciples are locked behind closed doors in spite of the fact, in spite of the fact that Mary Magdalene, having run to them and say, said that the tomb is empty, and then they all ran back, and Mary lingered and met the risen Christ in the garden. And in spite of the fact that the disciples had run to see for themselves that the tomb was empty and found it so, and then came back to where they were, they're still locked behind closed doors. They're desperately afraid. They're desperately afraid of the temple authorities, the Roman government authorities, which means that they're desperately afraid of being arrested. They're desperately afraid of being imprisoned for following Jesus. They're desperately afraid of being flogged, and they're desperately afraid of dying. And so there they are, hunkered down behind closed doors. What's interesting to me is that if you read carefully this scripture this morning and look at it carefully, um, and, and this just came to me, uh, this is the first time I've become aware of this, which is what I love about scripture is you can read it and read it and read it, and then all of a sudden you see something new that you hadn't seen before. You know, what's happened is the risen Christ comes and meets them in the upper room where they are behind the locked doors. The risen Christ comes in and says to them, peace be with you. And then the risen Christ says it again, peace be with you as God, who is my Abba, has sent me, so I send you. I mean, this risen, living Christ is there in their midst, a palpable presence, perhaps a different kind of body, but still a presence. And still they're locked behind closed doors. Still they're there because the risen Christ comes to them again. So it would seem that Robert Browning was right. Doubt is part and parcel of faith. And if we're afraid right now, if we're feeling lost and alone, if we are questioning everything that is happening in our world, if we're even having doubts about the resurrection, we're in very good company. Our situation is much the same. We are, in a metaphorical way, behind locked doors. Fear and anxiety seem to be the rule of the day. And even though just last week we celebrated with great joy the resurrection of Jesus our Christ, we still have our doubts. And the world looks pretty much like it did last week even though there's a sense that there's a flattening of the curve, so to speak, still hundreds of thousands of people are getting sick. And hundreds in our own country are dying. And that does not even take into account the hundreds of thousands of people across the globe, in countries especially that don't have the kind of health care and support that we and other developed countries have. And even though we celebrated Easter last week, we're still afraid. There's still people without jobs. There are people lining up in what looks like a, a stalled um, work day, rush hour, who aren't going to work but are lining up for food. And now fears are spilling out into the streets as some people are demanding that our government reopen businesses and relax the physical distancing guidelines that are being directed by medical experts. And what I'm wondering is what we're most afraid of, losing jobs and losing food and, and resources or dying. Maybe it's all of it. 
But I want to tell you, even for the disciples on that first Easter, there was good news. You see, the best news that happens is that the risen Christ, the embodiment of God, the embodiment of what is holy of spirit, comes and stands in their midst. That God, that Jesus, that spirit does not hold against them their fears, their anxieties, their humanity, their desertions, their denials, their betrayals. No, this living, risen Christ does not hold their fears against them. The living, risen Christ breathes on them. Now that may sound a little odd to us, especially now when we have to wear masks. But this living, risen Christ breathes on them. And you know what that's all about? You know what that's all about? That is about the very beginning of creation when God formed humanity in God's own image and breathed life into them. Do you see that Jesus understands this living, risen embodiment of God, this living, risen Christ understands that their fear has made them like the soldiers at the empty tomb, as if they are dead people. And so Jesus the risen Christ breathes life into them and again says, Peace be with you. My peace I give to you. And, and then goes on and says, As God has sent me, so I send you. And then gives instructions about that and says, If you forgive others, those for, that forgiveness will release them. And if you hold on to the sins and do not forgive, you will hold on to that. It will be a weight around your neck. It will hold you back from being all that you need to be. This is what this moment is about. Jesus, the risen Christ, breathing new life into people, resurrecting them, which is far different than resuscitating them, resurrecting them, which means transforming them and giving them new life. And then there's Thomas, uh, who actually got a bad rap, only because Jesus, the risen Christ, says to Thomas, don't doubt, but believe. And so we've all gotten on the bandwagon and called Thomas the Doubting Thomas. But you know, I love him. I love him because he's a little skeptical. And, and no more than the disciples could experience the risen Christ because Mary just came and told them about it. They had to experience it themselves. Thomas couldn't experience the living risen Christ until he had experienced it himself. And that really is what our role is, isn't it? That we carry what we experience to others so that then they can experience itself. When Mary comes from the tomb and says, I have seen the Lord, that is the witness. That is the apostle's witness. That is our witness. And the goal is not to impose our experience on other people, but instead to be so caught with this new life, this resurrected life that we can't help but exude a new life, a new experience to others. So much so that they will go and discover for themselves what this Jesus, this risen Christ, this living God, this comforting spirit is all about. This is the story of today, and this is our story too. You know, even though Thomas then proclaims, my Lord and my God, the risen Christ won't leave Thomas there. You see, because according to the gospel, according to John, throughout this whole gospel, Jesus has been telling people, move beyond the physicality of this. Engage the mystery of God. You know, Nicodemus says, 
you know, can somebody be born again after they've been born once? And Jesus says, think beyond this physicality. Turn your vision to heaven and mystery and an eternal God. And the woman at the well says, I want some of that water that you talk of. And Jesus says, move beyond this physical nature. While the nature of our physicality is wonderful and blessed by God, we are to enter into a moment of faith that will take us into the mystery of God. Or, as the great theologian C.S. Lewis says, said years and years ago, we don't have a soul. We are a soul. We happen to have a body. And so Jesus meets Thomas where he is. Meets Thomas in the physicality, allowing Thomas to touch so that he might believe. But then says, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. That's you and me, my friends. We get to believe even though we have not seen. We get to believe on the witness of those who have come to us and said, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. We get to move beyond just the seeing and the touching. We get to move into the hearing and the mystery of God. Our good news is that we live in this time and space where we get to encounter God and move from our physical understanding of this glorious world into a mystery of understanding of new life. We who must remain behind closed doors, who must be physically distant from each other, must not rely on touch anymore, but on a new way of being present to each other in the world. And what we can count on is that the living risen Christ will meet us, even over the internet, will be present even when we are apart, will dwell with us and extend a hand to us and extend peace to us and resurrection to us and breathe new life into us, even though we are apart. And we are then called to share that resurrected faith with others. Now, I want to tell you I'm in such frustration right now. As I know, you must be. I'm watching on TV, and I, I know that there's so much misinformation out there, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or Instagram. There's so much misinformation about what is happening in our world right now. And we are called upon to listen carefully, to educate ourselves, to understand where the gospel is and the information we are, be, we are receiving. I'm so frustrated because there are so many people who've set aside the common good in our country, but also for those around the world. That instead of working together to solve the problems, we are continuing to doubt and fear others. And now coming into a phase where we don't care for the welfare of our own citizens. And you know what? Somebody has got to say something. People of goodwill, people who seek the common good, people who know the resurrection story, people like you and me, we have got to proclaim that we are called to love expansively, to love sacrificially, to follow in a way that is reasonable, to understand where the truth lies, and to hear the gospel message and to speak the gospel message to the world. We live, we die, we are resurrected. This is the truth of our faith, and we have got to stand and be counted and be heard and proclaim the witness of the gospel now, today, tonight, tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after that. We cannot let the voices of those who hate rule the day. Because that is not the gospel. The gospel is one of love and compassion and hope. So my friends, we are called to rise, to rise up, 
And just as, a, as our first lesson said this morning, Jesus Christ rose and so will we. And now is the time to rise up, to rise up and be counted because as Jesus rose from the dead, so will we. Rise up, my friends. Let us rise up and let our voices be heard as the witness of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
come now to our time of Holy Communion, sharing in the feast of our God. So I hope you will gather your bread and cracker or your juice and wine and share with us now in this holy feast. We remember that on the last night of his earthly life, Jesus gathered with his friends and family and family of choice. And together they celebrated the high holy feast day of their people. A day that reminded them that God has been with them from the beginning, breathing life into them. A day in which they remembered that God heard their cries when they were enslaved and felt their cries and brought them out of their slavery into new life. And that when they wandered from God, which they and we are prone to do, God sent them prophets again and again to call them back to God. But it was at the end of the meal when Jesus broke from the tradition of that feast and made a new covenant with those gathered and so with us. And taking things that would always be at the table, things of the earth, Jesus took the bread and blessed it by giving thanks and broke it and gave it to those present and said, take and eat for this will be my life broken open for you. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and blessed it, giving thanks, and gave it to those present and said, drink from this, all of you. Jesus didn't say, drink from this, some of you. Jesus said, drink from this, all of you, for this is a new covenant, poured out for you and for all people for all time, so that you will know that nothing, nothing done by you, Nothing done to you could ever separate you from the love of God. I will give my life for that truth. And so we come to the table now. And if you feel comfortable, would you extend your hand in a gesture of blessing and receiving over the meal that you have set for yourself there where you are? And let us together, by extending our hand of joy and blessing, and blessing this meal, um, do that together. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless these gifts of grape and grain. May be, they be for us the very life and love of Jesus, so that as we receive these gifts into our bodies, we may be transformed into the life and love of Jesus for the world. This we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
I'm going to invite us to take the elements at the same time. Uh, so if you will take the bread that you have there, This is the feast of God's grace, the body of Christ given in love for you. El cuerpo de Cristo dado, dado por ti. Let us take and eat in thanksgiving. And now, if you will take your cup, this is the very love of Jesus, which is poured out for all of us. Let us drink and remember and give thanks. La sangre de Cristo se derramó por ti. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that yet again you have met us at this table with your gifts of love and grace. Now, let us be your people. Let us stand and witness to your truth. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, April the 26th, 
that will be you. And so uh, you saying one phrase, and we'll give you the script. All you have to do is follow the directions on how to record it and send it to us. And then our whole church family can be a part of producing a wonderful video for our first lesson next week. So we hope you will do that. So go to our website, click on live stream. No, click, sorry, click on events and send us an email by five o'clock tomorrow that says you want to participate in the first lesson video next Sunday. And then we'll send you your, your line that you will speak and also um, how to do the video. So we hope you'll do that. And I just wanna say, a lot of us are online right now doing, seeing a lot of things. And if you see a video or a music video, you read an article or see a picture or a cartoon or you see something that another church is doing that you think is fabulous, send it to us. We want you to help us curate this worship service because I tell you, when it's just a few of us doing it, we run out of ideas and so we need your ideas. And so send us your ideas that you are finding online so that we can have the best worship service ever. And I wanna remind you that we have some ongoing uh, opportunities to, that the church can care for you. Reverend Nan Baker is hosting an on, uh, on Facebook a, a group, uh, particularly for those who are truly isolated and cannot get out because of health issues or age or other things. And so, uh, but it's for everybody. And so you can go to our Facebook page and you can find that at, um, what is this? Let me see, it is called uh, United in Spirit dash capital U capital S. And uh, you can sign up there, uh, you can join that group. And then also, if you are in need of any type of prayer, pastoral care, any need that you have, you can email me at rev.dr.joehudson at thenewchurch.com. And I will make sure I or one of our other pastors is in contact with you. We want to be your church? Well, we don't just want to be, we are your church. And so we hope that you will stay with us and worship with us. Come online on Thursday night. Visit Anne's group, uh, Nan's group, uh, United in Spirit U.S., and uh, let us be your church. Uh, so glad you're here today. Um, I invite you now to receive this blessing. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, the grace to risk something big for something good, the grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but love and too small for anything but truth. So may God take your minds and work through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Our worship is ended now. Our service begins. In el nombre de Creador, Jesucristo y Espíritu Santo, in the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. Peace to love and serve the Lord.